Hi, I'm Matt O'Connor, attorney at law in Kansas City, Missouri with the O'Connor Law Firm PC, Mid-America Trial Lawyers. Uh, today I'm going to answer a question submitted by an attorney on the situation where you are stuck between the proverbial rock and a hard place. And that is um, a case where your client hasn't paid you um, for representation or uh, has not honored their contract with you in order to provide representation and you're in a jurisdiction where the court will not allow you to withdraw. Now, by way of background information, it's important to note a couple of things. First, um, the contract that you enter into with an attorney is a binding contract and uh, should set forth the terms of representation, both the hourly rate, uh, when payments are due, uh, what things are reasonable costs, are uh, copies included. Um, some lawyers charge for copies, some lawyers don't. Um, are you going to be responsible for the deposition costs of the case, which is fairly typical. That is, if uh, your lawyer has to hire a court reporter and pay the court reporter to take a transcript of a statement that they take, are you going to be responsible for that? All of those items should be discussed at the beginning of representation and clearly written out in the fee agreement so that both sides understand what the terms are. It helps as you go down through the road of the case, everybody's on the same page. So, what do you do? Um, for example, for a client with a client who can't pay, uh, but they want to pay, that for, for some unforeseen reason is no longer able to satisfy their contractual duty. Uh, can the lawyer withdraw from the case? Well, the answer used to be yes. Um, now, not so much. And the problem is, is with a lot of state agencies and uh, the down economy, uh, the state doesn't have enough money overall, and especially they are very overtaxed in terms of the uh, resources that are just not available for the public defender's office as they used to be. So their caseload is up, and the number of cases that uh, they have to handle increasing their budget has decreased. So if you start adding more cases where individuals are not able to pay their lawyers, and now uh, lawyers are seeking to withdraw from cases and then be assigned public defenders, just makes the problem worse. So there's a real policy um, conflict that's in play here. So a lot of courts um, throughout Missouri are not allowing privately retained lawyers to withdraw from the case. It's not my, uh, my job to say whether that's right or wrong, um, but there are a couple of factors that should be considered. First, let's look at it from the client's perspective. Because um, all of us as lawyers, that's our first duty, always first and foremost, is to do our best for a client and follow the rules of professional conduct and obviously provide zealous advocacy and representation for the client. Um, and the best place to look for anybody, um, if you're looking at answering this question, is to look at the rules of professional conduct. So let's start with rule 4.1.5. That's all of the Missouri Supreme Court rules for professional conduct are under rule 4. And in particular, rule 1.5 deals with fees. Um, now, a lawyer's fees are uh, to be, like I said, uh, to be communicated in writing preferably and within a reasonable time frame of commencing representation. So first things first, always have a written fee agreement so everybody understands what the scope of the employment is. That is, what is the lawyer going to do for you? How much are they going to charge you? Um, and it should also set forth very simple things. If the lawyer bills you for their time and that's what we lawyers do. It's hard to understand that sometimes uh, um, we have to spend time on cases. We have to bill for our time. It's what we do. There's a value to it. Um, the processes that we go through on our client's behalf, but um, certainly that is our stock and trade. It's not like we can, you know, produce a product or, or make a box and then go, here you go, and here's the cost. So our time is what we bill for. And um, each month you should get a bill from your attorney, and then there should be a clear delineation as to when you are supposed to pay that, both in the contract and maybe a reminder on the invoice or statement. So let's say that you're not able to pay and it's been a couple of months, you've communicated with your lawyer, I can't pay the bill. Um, the lawyer, as per the contract, is um, entitled to withdraw, it's set forth perhaps right in the contract. Well, under the rules of professional conduct uh, 1.16, a lawyer may withdraw uh, from representation in some circumstances, um, including um, those where they have the client has breached their financial obligation specifically in uh, under what's called optional withdrawal that means the attorney can withdraw or may withdraw from representation um, they can do so 
as long as it will not materially harm the client. That is, you don't want a lawyer withdrawing in the middle of a trial, the morning of trial, or when trial is so close um, that it's going to prejudice the client. Can you imagine if you were getting ready to go into surgery and all of a sudden the doctor said, no, nah, I'm going to change, uh, change my mind here. I don't want to do it. You need the surgery. Well, same circumstances apply here. So if withdrawal is going to be accomplished, it needs to be done in a manner that's not going to harm the client. So what do you do if it's early on in the representation? There's no question. You know, it's maybe a month into the case, and the case may take 12 months to 24 months. So, uh, and the client would not be harmed whatsoever by having a new attorney on the case. How does the lawyer withdraw? Well, they ask the court for permission, or uh, what we call ask for leave of court to withdraw from the case. Let's say that the judge says no. Um, so then the client has a lawyer who doesn't want to be on the case because they're not getting paid and they're entitled to be paid for their time. And the client um, is in naturally wondering, well, what kind of job is this lawyer going to do for me? Well, um, while that makes sense, common sense, um, keep in mind the lawyer does have an ethical duty to do their best. What if you get in a situation where you have a client and who won't pay and an attorney who's doing their best and the client, um, the relationship breaks down so much that it makes it difficult, if not impossible, to continue representation? Well, that's a different, different situation. Obviously, if you cast the financial difficulties aside, the rules of professional conduct allow for and in fact really demand that a lawyer be allowed to withdraw if the relationship between the attorney and client is so broken down that basic communication can't be affected. So that's probably um, your best bet, but the reality is um, it's up to the discretion of the judge. So if I'm a client in this situation, I think I make every effort to work with your lawyer um, to provide them some funds, even if you're not able to provide them the full amount of the fees, or um, do your best to maybe seek a different attorney who may be less expensive, or work with the lawyer to minimize the time that you require for your case. That is, if you have an appointment with them, be on time, be prepared, um, bring questions and ask, write things down. If you're going to uh, work with the lawyer, um, probably get a better result. So those are a couple of factors to consider um, when withdrawing from a case and also from a client's perspective.